The Tomahawk is one of my favorite boards to review. Powerful and focused, it is the motherboard that everybody's eye is set on season after season. If you've seen a gaming computer uh, around your neighborhood, chances are one of them is powered by a Tomahawk of some kind. Today, we are reviewing the highly awaited Mag X670 He Tomahawk from MSI, a board with a long tradition of hardcore gaming, focused engineering, and badassery. And fun fact for you, uh, the summum of badassery is, well, supporting my channel. Simply join or simply buy the most amazing tech inspired clothing lines in the world, and this will make you hotter, better, and well, uh, all overall more attractive. As usual, the MAG is the more budget-minded family of pro-gamer products MSI produces and the Tomahawk its shining star. And this year is particularly interesting because the Tomahawk gets the X670E treatment. So it comes with DDR5 RAM for the first time and uh, uh, PCIe 5.0 abilities, which should uh, rocket the Tomahawk to new heights. Do you know what I done your tomahawk uh, rocket that we've seen uh, before and this decision is so much more special because uh, we get an x670 e powered motherboard for well close to 300 bucks which is pretty rare these days now starting with the obvious well we do have a very premium eight pcb layers which is a first for the tomahawk and thus bring up its value in terms of lifespan in terms of stability thanks to a greater pcie signal insulation but also in terms of vrm heat diffusion a big instant premium boost uh, um, for the Tomahawk on this feature alone. Design-wise, we stay in a very sober and familiar dark military theme. MSI does take this opportunity to demonstrate its absolute metallic control showing off different brushing techniques. No embedded or hidden RGB strips underlying a heavy-duty metallic overall feel. But for the ones who still want to shine, we do have four Mystic compliant RGB connectors, two of which are addressable. CPU socket wise, the X670E Tomahawk is powered by AMD's AM5 CPU socket featuring a 1718-pin LGA, which obviously greatly increases the CPU bandwidth and worth noting, and as usual, it is now clearer than ever that this CPU socket will be here for a long, long time to be uh, uh, powering three or four um, generations of Ryzen processors. So in general, getting one of those X670 or E uh, powered motherboards is a sound future proofing investment. Now, VRM wise, well, the Tomahawk boasts an impressive 1360 amps organized in a 14 plus three 80 amps direct phases amongst which 1,120 are CPU-centric and that will give the Tomahawk one of the best overclocking abilities available at this price range. Did not quite manage to clock uh, my Ryzen 7900X up to 5.7 GHz, but managed to keep it at a very solid 5.6 GHz. Therefore, overclocking-wise, you're definitely in the green. Cooling-wise, the Tomahawk is equipped with rather well-sized cooling blocks. The main one shows a large supportive wall to support and transfer excess heat towards its extended radiating plate. The side block is nothing but a large chunk of aluminum with five protuberating winglets providing a greater radiating area. Now, both of the blocks feature the now very standard double contact design, which provides a direct thermal padded contact to both power stages and chokes. And the least we can say about those blocks is that they do a great job at handling um, uh, or managing intense workload heat. With the Ryzen 7900X running at 5.6 GHz under an hour-long synthetic load, our main block kept the 50 degrees Celsius bar safe at all time. The side block struggled a bit more, uh, but did manage to stabilize temps below 55 degrees Celsius more often than not, which is not a bad result at all. And that's where having a copper pipe to link and spread the excess heat equally amongst both blocks would have been useful in my opinion. Overall, uh, nothing the Tomahawk should be shy or ashamed about. We have a very responsive, agile, efficient VRM, which can be safely be used with a medium and uh, upper tier 
processor. So B plus is my grade and uh, Ryzen 7 and above my recommendation for this VRM. Now, memory wise, our board can support up to 196 gigabyte of DDR5 RAM organized in a dual channel configuration and clockable up to a very conservative six gigahertz. With that being the uber fast, monstrous RAM master, uh, I don't know what I'm saying, the Tomahawk RAM abilities will do plenty good for your daily gaming needs. Not the best buck for memory intensive tasks such as 3D rendering, but perfect for heavy AAA gaming. Staying in the memory, our Tomahawk supports four M.2 solid state drive connectors. The CPU linked one is the only one benefiting from the PCIe 5.0 standard and can swap data up to a very fast 128 gigabit per second. It also benefited from all the cooling attention MSI could give it. It gets the dual sided thermal pad treatment as well as double level heat shields, which are not too much knowing how hot PCIe 5.0 drivers can get. Our three other M.2 solid state drives all run at four PCIe lanes at PCIe 4 standard, meaning that they can swap data up to a plenty fast 64 gigabit per second individually. Worth noting, um, the last stick shares bandwidth with the last 16 expansion slot and will run at half speed if the expansion slot is used. Now, stick two and three share a rather small thermal padded heat shield in my opinion which keep them cool in a day-to-day -day normal usage but I would not advise to pair these two in a red configuration as I doubt that this thermal plate would uh, keep them away from thermal throttling. The last M.2 connector gets no heat shield at all which is surprisingly given the 300 bucks price tag of this board and I frankly do not understand why it at all shares bandwidth with the last uh, 16 uh, PCIe export and why is this 16 PCIe export exists anyways, but, but I'll cover that in, in, in two seconds, I promise. Finally, I need to mention that all of our M.2 connectors are equipped with its, uh, uh, well, uh, MSI very own two less locking mechanism, which I do find weak, poorly designed and uh, hard to use when compared to what Asus or Gigabyte came up with. Yeah, overall, not a win for MSI, at uh, least I can say. PCIe 5.0 integration is rather limited with only one PCIe 5.0 enabled M.2 solid state drive connector, which when you compare with other X670E powered motherboards is, well, a bit short. Now, export wise, we have four PCIe slots, one bachelor and three 16 slots with different speeds. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU features a full 16 CPU linked PCIe lanes and can swap up to 64 4 gigabyte per second fueled PCIe 5.0 standard. Obviously, this is where you'd want to put your GPU for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. The other slots are a mash of standard and speeds. The only thing that having that many slots achieve is diluting the available board bandwidth in exports which are too many and too slow to truly bring any value. I would have preferred to see only two 16 PCIe slots so that, you know, we have say 16 and four or even an eight PCIe 5.0 shared bandwidth so that we can have a correct dual GPU support instead of having those four exports and different speeds coming from different places. It, it, it just, absolutely makes no sense to me. Not that having two GPUs will ever do something uh, uh, gaming wise for you, but it'll make just more sense to me and add a little bit of production value to the motherboard. So yeah. Now back IO wise. First, let me know the presence of an integrated back IO, which is always a good sign, especially here. And starting from the left, we have a flash BIOS button for a CPU less BIOS update. Always good to have, and especially here, and you'll understand why at the end of this review, why this thing saved my life and it shouldn't. Next, we have three display outputs, one display port, HDMI, and a type C, which utilize at least one uh, PCIe 5.0 lane to provide both data swap and graphical output if needed, a new little feature I do like. Next, we have four USB 3.2 USB plugs, including that last type C we just saw, all running at 10 gigabit per second, except this one, which runs at dual channel and can swap data up to 20 gigabit per second, pretty much standard our days. Four or five gigabit USB plugs, a 2.5 gigabit surge protected LAN, nothing surprising here. Our dual band Wi-Fi 6E able to transmit in the much cleaner and faster 6 gigahertz radio spectrum. And finally, a aging yet respectable 
7.1 channel Realtek ALC1200 codec serviced by an adequate 500 microfarads worth of capacitors. Now, not the best anymore, but with a much thicker 8 layers PCB board, we can count on a well insulated tracing, which should produce in turn a better than average gaming sound environment, as well as a clear and static free recording experience. Overall, uh, 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 pff, uh, okay, Bakayo. Uh, which is, you know, uh, adequately equipped. MSI definitely did not take any risks. Yeah, it's not uber, uber surprising. But yeah, it'll cover your needs for the 99.99% of the your, of the users out there. Now, chipset-wise, well, our Tomahawk is powered by AMD's brand new X670E chipset, which comes in a 27 watts from 21 chips and placed right next to another, which is not the most recommended location for me. I like to see them in opposite sides of the board like Asus does, but in this case, it did not make any problem because MSI did have the good sense of providing a rather thick heat shield, which does a great job at keeping our chipsets below 40 degrees Celsius at all time. On the inside, well, we do have a bunch of PCIe lanes going in three different PCIe standards direction, but what really set apart the x 670 e is that it can use more PCIe 5.0 lanes from the CPU, which in turn allows boards like this to impose a lot more PCIe 5.0 bandwidth than its watered down X670 variant. So if this board lacks PCIe 5.0 integration, and it does, it definitely is not the chipset fault. Now, front panel connector wise, well, there is really nothing new here. We have our two second generation USB connectors for monitoring, our two five gigabit per second front panel connector and a type C uh, able to transfer up to 10 gigabit per second and no Thunderbolt 4, which for a board of this pricing is understandable because yeah, uh, Thunderbolt 4 like 60 to $100 just to integrate. Fun fact for you to know. Cooling wise, well, the Tomahawk uh, has a healthy 8 PWM fans, one of which can support a water pump, which is more than enough, to be fair, to support most of available cooling solutions out there, and uh, in par with a single GPU status of the Tomahawk. And apart from that, not much enthusiast friendly feature, no uh, temp uh, sensors, no flow sensors, so definitely not um, custom water cooling uh, platform per se, more like of a classic, you know, more, uh, yeah, air all-in-one cooling. Now, troubleshooting wise, well, we seem the very basic the Tomahawk usually offers, meaning our first eight easy debugger here to signal us the main stages of our boot. But other than that, well, you're on your own and that is really problematic uh, because for one, when you take this motherboard out of the box and you put a processor and you try to boot it as, as you are rightfully entitled to think so, it will not. It'll give you the yellow red double light, meaning that it's fucked and you need to update the BIOS right away from their website before the first boot to hope see something uh, coming alive. Now that is a big bad point in my book. I, I really believe so. Two, when my board was out of electricity, out of power for a few hours, what happened when I tried to reboot it and benchmark the VRM, it bricked itself again. Went back to yellow red light, had to reinstall the latest BIOS, and then it, it booted again. And I cannot understand why it's so flimsy, why it's so unstable. And coming from MSI, they always had some kind of problems with their BIOS in the past two to three years, but that bad? I mean, I know Asus also, uh, you know, uh, had their problem with booting with X670E powered motherboard, but MSI should really take a hint, make sure everything is updated to the last, latest possible BIOS and give us something stable. It's almost unforgivable in my view. Now, in conclusion, the MAG X670E Tomahawk will cost you around 300 bucks before taxes and despite coming with quantities of hope, this thing was a big, Big disappointment. Now, how disappointed do I feel? You'll never know. We had a 300 box X670 heat powered motherboard. It was a Tomahawk. And, and, and truth is, I find it messy, shaky, and frankly, 
underwhelming. We have that strange PCIe export menu, which again, could have been consolidated in one fast second GPU slot. It utterly fails to use all of the X670E abilities and does a rather poor job in terms of PCIe 5.0 integration. Basically, this board could have been powered by an X670 uh, chipset or, or a B650E chipset, you would not have known or seen any differences. But most importantly, this thing got me sweating bullets uh, uh, at every boot, running BIOS reinstallation over reinstallation, just hoping it would not break itself again. And, and I could go on. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I do find the VRM adequate and, and frankly very powerful, but that is one of the very few things I'm happy with this Tomahawk. I'll say this, it's a, it's a good gamer board, but there are so many missed opportunities that it's sad for someone who's been reviewing Tomahawks for the past six years and being constantly surprised, happily surprised and defending its name. So um, I don't know what happened, but there's definitely a lack of mapping and, and engineering coming from MSI on this one. There's also a lack of imagination. I mean, most importantly, and um, ambition to fully express the potential that I've seen on this motherboard. It simply does not excite as much as previously released models. And sure, every reviewer out there probably gave a stellar review of this motherboard, but I do suspect, and I'm gonna get torched for this, but I like it, uh, that they want to remain in MSI's good little reviewing papers so that they can keep getting sampling. Thing is, I bought this board, so, whatever happened to me is probably going to happen to you. It's, I cannot blame this on uh, a bad sampling or coming from, you know, RMA or stuff like that. This was bought on, on the, in a store, like you will. So as far as my money goes, this is definitely one place it does not want to be.